This is my delicious chocolate pudding pie with shaved chocolate and homemade whipped cream with an Oreo cookie crust. Please watch the following video and enjoy. And let me know how you like it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. We are going to make our homemade chocolate pudding. Woo -woo. We need a medium sized saucepan over medium heat. To that, we are going to add two and a half cups of whole milk. Bam! Boom, boom, boom. Love it. A third cup of sugar. And we are going to whisk this frequently. In the meantime, we have other stuff we can be working on. I have six egg yolks, large, they have to be large. To that, I am going to add two tablespoons of cornstarch to my egg yolks. Turn on a bigger light. Yeah, you guys can see better. Hopefully that worked. Okay. So, two tablespoons of cornstarch into the large egg yolks. Six in total. And we need to whisk this. Keeping an eye on your milk and sugar and whisking frequently. Mm -hmm. Take a second, twist this. You don't want your sugar settling at the bottom and burning. Which it just was at the bottom, so make sure you do it often. You now make sure you get all your cornstarch lumps out. When you add cornstarch to egg yolk, it becomes very thick. And set that aside. Whisk our milk and sugar again. Now I have eight ounces of semi sweet chocolate. You want a good quality chocolate because it is a chocolate pudding pie. So you want a good quality, good tasting chocolate. Yummy, yummy in my tummy. So I'm going to move this cutting board over here. Yep, you can see. Once this mixture starts simmering, then we'll move to the next step. In the meantime, we're going to start chopping up our chocolate. Come on. Ooh, that's a hard brick. Ooh, I think chocolate just won't fly. I'm not sure. I don't see it anywhere, but it sounded like something flew across. Keeping track of, let me make sure there's no chocolate on the burner. Okay. Keeping track of your milk and sugar. We don't want any burning.
chocolate does not like to break. Not thick chocolate like this. Woo wee! That is quite the job. Whiskey dee whisk whisk whisk. That piece is too thick. They don't have to be super small, as you see. I mean, if you wanted to use chocolate chips and save the hassle of chopping the chocolate, you could do that. Just make sure it's semi-sweet. And it's a total of eight ounces of chocolate. Cut this way in. Okie dokie, chocolate. All cut. We need to set this aside. Go back to our sugar and milk. Let us Switch the burner side. There's two options for this burner to heat, so. Now that I put it to the hotter side, it seems to be coming up quicker. This is simmering. I'm going to turn the heat off for now because I don't want it to burn. Actually, I'll just switch it back to the lower setting. Here's what I mean. This burner has two sides, high and high. It's a double ring on this side. The one it's on now, only the center gets hot. On the right side, both rings get hot. So I have it back to the single center heat on medium. Now, back to our egg yolk. Turn that. Okay, I'm going to give it another whisk. This is our six egg yolks and two tablespoons of cornstarch. To that, we are going to add some of the simmering milk and sugar slowly to the eggs. And we're going to whisk it until it's nice and smooth. It's called tempering the eggs. And you gotta do it slow so you don't make scrambled eggs. So, I'm going to slowly add 
a spoonful. And then stir it, whisk it. This allows the milk to cool down while at the same time raising the heat of the eggs so that it's a slow process and they don't overcook and become scrambled eggs. That is what tempering is. So we're going to add another one. We're going to slowly add in. You've probably heard of tempering eggs before. It probably seemed like a very daunting task, but if you're very careful, as you see, it's no problemo. Well, I'm going to do one more just to be safe, actually, before I add it back in. Whisk it. Eventually, your egg mixture over here will start feeling quite warm. So you know you don't have cold eggs anymore, and you won't have to worry about, oh my god, am I making scrambled eggs? Well, the answer is no, because it is now caught up heat-wise. And then we're going to... Pour it back into the remaining milk and sugar. And we are going to whisk. We're going to whisk constantly until the mixture begins to thicken. Because of the cornstarch, it'll thicken and it'll come to a very gentle boil. When we start having bubbles at the surface and they pop, that would be a gentle boil. I feel it. Now we got to wait for little bubbles. Oh, there they are. There's the bubbles. Now we remove it from the heat because we don't want to keep cooking it. And to it we are going to add six tablespoons I think it was six let me double check my math yeah six tablespoons of salted butter chopped up we also want to add our eight ounces of chocolate and we're going to whisk now we're going to be making it into chocolate and I'm going to also add in a teaspoon and a half one and a half teaspoons of vanilla at this point Now we're going 
to continue whisking. melted and incorporated into it which will make it creamy and smooth from the butter and the chocolate obviously for the flavor oh it smells so good if you need a chocolate fix this is the way to go Doesn't that look delicious? Chocolate pudding. Now, if you want to eat this, you can just eat it as chocolate pudding. You got to let it cool in the refrigerator. You don't have to make it into a pie. Okay, I think everything is melted. I'm going to transfer it to my hot pad. We have here our Oreo cookie crust completely cooled. Our homemade chocolate pudding ready for the crust. Mmm, that tastes good. So we are going to transfer our pudding into our crust. I'm going to kind of pour it slow just to make sure. Put some a diffuser like I'm using it to pour the spatula. Pour it directly onto the spatula to make sure I'm not pouring it all in one spot and breaking my crust from the weight. Once it starts filling the entire crust, you don't need to diffuse it with your spoon. Now you're going to leave this in your refrigerator four to six hours or overnight. At least four to six hours though. I will be making homemade whipped cream for this as well. Well, obviously the whipped cream is not ready to sit on it yet because the pudding is hot and that'll just melt our whipped cream. Make sure to spread your pudding so it's level in your pan. I know there are a lot of people that like the skin that forms on the pudding, and if you're that person, just put it in the refrigerator as is. I personally don't care for that skin, and if you're the same, you want to cover your pie with saran wrap while it's in the refrigerator. And as you see, a deep pan will work just as well as a regular vented 9-inch pie pan. The difference is this is more condensed and smaller this way to make up for the height this way. And I prefer it this way because then you get a thicker piece of chocolate pudding in your pie. This is going to be delicious. I hope you really enjoy this recipe. Let me know how it turns out for you, or if you have some suggestions how to make it better. We have here one chocolate pudding cream pie. I'm going to remove the saran wrap.
cookie crusts them off. And I am going to, now if you want to pipe on your whipped cream, if you're going to take this as a dessert, as a party or whatever, you can put it in a piping bag. I'm not doing that. This is for someone Jay works with. So I'm just going to put my whipped cream on top. He uh, switched with Jay to get out a little early and he stayed late for Jay one day because I had a doctor's appointment. And had he not switched, I wouldn't have been able to make it to my appointment. Just check up for my sinusitis surgery. If you're having problems with sinusitis, you will definitely be glad if you get that end. In my previous videos, you can probably hear me go all the time, and that was my sinuses. And if you'll notice, I don't do that now. If you watch my other videos, that is. <laughs> You don't want to manipulate the whipped topping too much because you'll flatten it. It's not like the store whipped cream that's got all kinds of stabilizers in it to keep its form. It's artificial stuff, by the way. Naturally, it's not meant to happen. There we go. I think it looks pretty, pretty enough. If you do make homemade whipped cream and you, you know, you don't put it on a pie like I'm doing, you have it in a container and then the next day or later when you go to get it, it's flat. Don't stir it. Get a whisk and re-whisk it. That's what you need to do. Voila, one chocolate pudding pie. I'm gonna make some curls in my next video to make it look pretty. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoy this recipe and please like and subscribe.